Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I'd like to do before I start a new project is go ahead and do a reset on Moto, or actually go up to the uh, tab here and double click on the tab. And that's going to kind of restore my UI to the baseline version. That's in case I have anything uh, left over from a previous project or a previous scene that uh, I don't want carried over into this new scene. So like I said earlier, this is going to be a box modeling project. So the first thing we need to do is build a box. It's gonna represent the volume of the model that we're building. So I'm gonna click here to uh, unit primitives and I'm going to open the properties panel, tool properties, and uh, drag that out so it pins there. Now the position of this cube, I want to be zero. So I'm gonna click on these three things, these three little gang uh, buttons on the side here one time. So that it says equals and hit zero, hit the tab key and then they're all uh, at zero. Now for as far as the size goes, this is going to be a, roughly a size 10 last. So the uh, dimensions are going to be in, uh, I'm going to put them in centimeters here. Uh, and if you don't have your units set to um, meters and centimeters, you will have to type in CM after each one of the uh, uh, parameters that you put in. So um, I'll just start off here. Uh, see X I think is 9.7 uh, centimeters. And you do have to type lowercase. If you hit uppercase, then it defaults to meters. <laughs> Y, I believe, is uh, 11.5 centimeters. Now I'm just going to hit the tab because I already have centimeters set up in my units. And uh, Z is going to be 27 centimeters, and I'll hit the tab. And that's all we need to do. I'm just going to hit the Apply button, and there is our volume that we are going to model. All right. So the next thing we need to do is add some uh, backdrop images in the viewport to act as guides for us so we can model our shoe too. As you probably already know by now, I've prepared the backdrop uh, images for you. So I'm just gonna click on this bar right at the top to expose these buttons. We're just gonna move to the right to click on that button right there to open up the Clips browser panel. Now I'll just go up to the the little uh, drop down panel at the top, click on that and go to load image. And it's gonna bring up a requester for me. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is load in this uh, last side view here. And now I'm gonna go up to the scenes panel, the little drop down arrow right there and go to add backdrop item. Now. By default, the backdrop item that it adds is always a meter square and it's projected from the front. And in our case, we want it to project from the side and it'll be the right side for us. And we add an image to that by just clicking on that little button and it brings up the file browser. And there we go. Now, as you can see, Moto has resized the backdrop item to fit the image because it assumes that the image size is one centimeter per pixel. Now, as you can see, that makes for a very large backdrop item. Now I can try to adjust the pixel scale here to fit the, uh, the side of the box, but uh, I'm just guessing at that point. Or if I actually know the parameters, I can uh, put them up in the top uh, scale area. But the easiest thing to do would be to have the backdrop size snap to the size of the box. Well, we can do that quite easily by unchecking keep aspect, go down to use uniform size, and then select auto fit. And there it is. Now let's go ahead and add another backdrop, but this time for the uh, top down view. And to do this, we're simply going to open up a, a file window and navigate over to where our images are stored. and then just grab an image and just drag it and drop it on top of the viewport. And there you go. We've automatically created a backdrop item. However, by default, Moto creates a front facing uh, backdrop item. So we just need to change that to a top and that's it. Now we'll just use the same auto fit feature. Uncheck that, check that one and click auto fit and we're there. 
As you can see, there's a slight discrepancy in the direction that the uh, top image is facing, but that's an easy fix. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and add one more uh, image for our backdrop items. And this time I'm gonna use the front view and select that. And now go to add a new backdrop item. Now just click on the images button there and select the front view and we're done. Let's go ahead and use the auto sizing feature as we did before. And there we go. Now, since the front and the top images are facing the correct direction, I'm just going to flip the side uh, image. So uh, all we have to do is go down to these projection parameters and just click on flip. And that's all you have to do. Now, as you can see, Moto gives you a lot of controls over the viewability of a less than ideal uh, backdrop image. For example, we can invert the image. Uh, we can uh, blend it if it uh, needs to be a little more anti-aliased around the edges, around fine lines and such. Uh, we can also adjust the contrast. We can increase the contrast, decrease the contrast as needed. Just use those sliders or input a number. We can also decrease or increase the brightness if you want to view your image as a silhouette. Now that we have all our backdrop items in place and our images attached to them, we want to be sure we name them uh, correctly uh, because it's very, very confusing to uh, have everything called backdrop item and not know what's what. Now I'm just going to do a little uh, housekeeping here and move the camera to the top of the item list and I'm going to shift select all of my backdrop items and hit control G and that's going to group them into a folder. And we want to be sure and name that folder before we forget. And we'll simply call this backdrops. This way, if they're in a group, I can turn them all on and off at the same time or open the group folder and turn them on and off individually. So there we go. So you'll notice right off the bat that there is a little bit of a problem here. There's a few things. One, I can't see through these images to my object and I can't see through my object to the images. So that may be a little problematic for us. So what I'm going to do is set some viewport parameters. So uh, let me close the um, clips images panel and I'll clip on that little cog to bring up the viewport properties or you can hit the O key, it'll do the same thing. Now in order to see through these backdrop images in perspective view. And the reason I say perspective view is because it is different in perspective view than it is orthographic. Now, if I click on overlay drawing at the top there, you can see, you can see through it. Now topology mode will also work, but I think overlay drawing works a little bit better because it doesn't change the uh, gamma of the image as much. So now we have the images on our backdrop items nicely transparent. We can see through them to the uh, work plane grid below. We can also see our model behind it and we can see through them to the other images uh, for the backdrop items. Uh, however, uh, there is another setting we need to take care of here. And let's go up to an orthographic view. Let's go to top view and guess what? You cannot see any of the backdrop item images. What's going on here? So let's go ahead and click on overlay for the background imagery. And now we can see our images in orthographic view. One last thing I wanted to do is take the top view or the, excuse me, the uh, top backdrop item and move it to the bottom of the model to the ground plane as it were. And uh, there we go. Now we're set up. So one last thing I want to do for the viewport setup is to turn off the uh, ground plane grid. And uh, I do this because it just adds a lot of visual noise to the scene when you're working with backdrops. So I'm just going to hit the control one, select toggle grid work plane at the bottom there of that pie pop-up menu. And we are ready to rock. But as always, don't forget to save your work.